First of all, I want to thank all these guys for being interested in me and uh, giving me the opportunity to go visit their facilities and look at their campus and stuff. And um, I, I'm going to make my decision by where I feel the most comfortable and where I feel like home at. With the sixth pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Julio Jones. <laughs> What about him? <laughs> Why are we even speaking on him? What makes him one of the best players in the league? Words can't describe it. <laughs> I have nothing to say, man. He's, he's an absolute beast. Field and wow, what a catch. Really? Julio Jones has everything. The top out of the hands of Malcolm Butler, who thought he had an interception. I mean, he's big, he's fast, uh, uh, the way he can come out his routes, you know, he can make catches, he can run by you, he can do it all. One NFL coordinator told me he's simply an avatar. There is no one like him. He can beat you in all three phases of the football field. It's, he actual avatar. Yeah, Like, legit. he is different, different human than every other human I've ever seen. It. The best receiver in the entire NFL is Julio Jones. He's the best I've ever seen. Uh, he looks like a freak. He's the best I've ever seen. I'm serious. Julio Jones is the best receiver in the entire NFL. He's phenomenal. The wide receiver position has the stigma of being the divas of the NFL. When things don't go their way and they express themselves on the sideline or in interviews, they are automatically considered a diva. All 32 teams have probably had one wide receiver with that label. But one thing for sure is the guy who has his name ranked in almost every record book of some sort and is a top five receiver to ever play the game is the total opposite of a NFL diva. And instead, he's a silent assassin, which his humbling upbringing may be why. Every town has had at least one high school player that was just unbelievably athletic. They either dominated at their main sport or was gifted enough to dominate multiple sports. Between 2005 and 2008, down in Foley, Alabama, the special player that was gifted with just natural born skills went by the name Julio Jones. But that's not where it started. February 8th, 1989, Quintoris Lopez Jones was born to his mother, Queen Marvin, who was expecting a girl during her pregnancy. But once the due date came, a boy popped out. Quickly having to come up with a name for this new baby, she was searching through a baby book when she came across Quintores. It was kinda like her name and she liked the way it looked and sounded. Growing up in a low income neighborhood with gangs and drugs being sold right outside their front door, Queen did her absolute best to provide for her two kids. She worked double shifts down the street at the KFC cooking the chicken and working the drive through Then would come home every day completely exhausted to cook dinner for her kids. Growing up, Quintores was a mama's boy. He did everything and went everywhere with her. Even sat in the back in the kitchen at KFC on the days her manager wasn't in. She would give him lessons to not settle in life and go after his dreams and never to give up. That's when at just five years old, he promised her that someday she wouldn't have to do this anymore because he was either going to the NBA or NFL. Even the kids on the block knew something was special about him when it came to his athletic ability. He was always the youngest by four or five years, but would beat everyone at whatever game they played. His favorite was throw him up, bust him up. Where I'm from, we call it rumble fumble. But the point is that one kid gets the football and all the others playing will try to catch him and throw him to the ground before scoring a touchdown. And they would sometimes play in the middle of the street. So instead of grass or even a dirt field, they would be getting tackled on straight pavement. And I knew I was pretty good at, you know, making the older guys miss. And um, pretty tough just playing in the streets. We play throw him up, bust them up. And we just throw it up, whoever gets it. Like everybody's out there against you. It's like you against everyone. His older cousin said they could never catch him though, or he would just stiff arm a guy to the ground with one hand, which is something he still uses in his game today. But back then, he was never scared of anything. He began playing organized football around age 12, signing up for a local league and playing running back and safety. He wasn't that big at the time, only about five of five, but he already has shown signs of being a great athlete. Those who knew Quintores back then say everything just came natural. He was born with that strength and speed like he was created in a lab where scientists put together all the perfect traits to create the perfect athlete. Even when his middle school coaches saw him play, they thought he was good enough to play high school varsity at 12, 13 years old because of how gifted he was. When he was about 12, he was playing outside with a cousin when Queen decided she was no longer going to call her son Quintoris anymore. She was going to call him Julio instead. Quintoris is a Latin word for gladiator, but in a way, it didn't suit him. 
Yeah, he was a gifted athlete who was tough and determined, but he was not exactly like that in his everyday demeanor. Actually, the complete opposite. He was quiet, shy, and kept to himself the majority of the time. Once he reached the ninth grade, Fooley High School ran a wing T offense. With barely any meat on his bones, Little Julio was in the backfield as a running back and played corner on defense. But please, don't let his size fool you because he was a monster. But it wasn't until his sophomore year when they got a new varsity head coach, Todd Watson, who changed the offense and spread things out, moving Julio out to receiver. He also grew that summer. He remembers it got so bad that it made his knees ache with pain on a daily, growing from about 5'9 to 6'3 in just a few months. My knees was hurting so bad. I was having growing pains in my knees and it was, I mean, it was killing me. Like, like boo hoo crying. Like. Taller and stronger as a sophomore, Julio liked the move to receiver, saying he liked the one on one matchups. When he was out there, it was just him and another guy playing man to man or maybe zone, instead of playing running back where there's eight in the box and you have to run through the linemen, the linebackers, and the secondary. Plus, his height difference set him apart from his peers, and he made an immediate impact as a sophomore, catching 51 passes for 805 yards and eight touchdowns while Fooley went 8-2, losing in the playoffs. His football ability didn't go unnoticed for very long on the varsity level. After that year, he began hearing from college programs. Not only was he just good at running routes and catching the ball, he was also a fantastic blocker, making him an all-around wide receiver. Because coming from the running back position, he knew how important it was for everyone to block their man. So instead of being a selfish player who was just all about himself and wanted the ball, he also wanted to see his teammates show out and eat as well. And I love the block in the running game, probably because I played running back. Very important for your, for your receivers and things like that to block. The wheels were in motion and there was no stopping him. He had 75 catches for 1,300 yards and 15 touchdowns his junior season as the Lions went 10-2 and in advance of the second round. By the end of his standout junior season, he had become a recruiting sensation. Many analysts rated him as the best prospect in the country. Pretty much all of them saying that he was the best all-around wide receiver. But as humble as he was, he never let it get to him. He did get a little overwhelmed though with his recruiting process, with all the schools calling him and sending letters nonstop. Every day he came home, he had at least 10 or 15 voicemails left for him from different colleges. But he made up his mind to not think about it too much and wait to commit until after his senior year. He agreed to announce his decision on National Signing Day on ESPN, which built up a lot of anticipation since he still had one more year to go. But besides football, he was also a superstar on the track and on the basketball court. He was a state champion in long jump and triple jump in both 2006 and 7, and used those jumping abilities inside on the court as well. In a playoff game his senior year, after a steal and fast break, they say after receiving the ball from his teammate, he took off from near the free throw line like Superman out of nowhere and slammed it down. It was like a bolt of thunder. And it was even rumored that it was on four-time NBA All-Star DeMarcus Cousin, who was the starting center for the opposing team. The gym erupted on both sides with screaming and fans crowding the floor. And the game wasn't even over yet. But the refs had to stop the game for about five minutes until things calmed down. Everyone was in shock except for Julio who ran back on defense unfazed. That's just how humble and self-centered he was. He became a local star and was taking pictures and signing autographs everywhere he went around town. Adults would even ask him to sign their foreheads, but he never let the new fame get to him. One of his teachers said that he could have gone all 12 years through fully public schools without being noticed if it wasn't for his freaky athletic skills because of how quiet and more of a take everything in of a kid he was. But when it came to his game days in either one of his three sports, he was a different animal. During his last year of high school, to be in a better neighborhood and access to better resources, he moved in with a guy named Sam who was like a father figure to him and helped him go to different camps and college visits. But quick side note, if you're a viewer who stays up with social media, I'm sure you know about the memes going around about Soulja Boy being the first rapper to do a lot of things. I'm the first rapper to come out with a video game. So I discovered Chief Keef. I'm the first rapper with the Street Fighter arcade in their crib. I'm the first rapper with a pool table in his house. Man, stop playing with me. What? I'm the first to, to do all type of shit. Even the first rapper with the new iPhone back in 2007. Man, I had the first rapper with the iPhone. They came, they brought me the iPhone. They said, Steve this, Jobs himself Steve came. Steve Jobs this, and, and Apple, the whole team said, it's the first iPhone. Now you're probably like, why am I telling you this? 
Well, Julio has the power to say he was the first NFL player with the iPhone as well. Because when the phone came out that summer back in 2007, Julio wanted it. So Sam, the new guy he was living with, cut him a deal. He told him that he would get him the iPhone if he scored three touchdowns in his next game. Which was like a piece of cake to Julio that he couldn't pass up on. That Friday night, he returned the opening kickoff 100 yards for a touchdown. And by halftime, he had himself a new phone. His senior year in 2007, the Lions went 12-1, and scoring a school record 463 points and winning their first and still only regional championship. He caught 68 passes for 1,100 yards and 16 touchdowns and was named Alabama's Mr. Football of the Year. His recruiting process picked up even more. The second year head coach Nick Saban at the time and some assistants sat in a darkened room scouting potential players to offer scholarships to. And after only three plays of Julio's highlights, Saban shouted, pause, we have to get him here. This is the type of kid you can build your program around. Even Julio's high school coach wanted to make sure his best player stayed home and went to play for the Royal Tie. And even once went the great lengths to keep then USC head coach Pete Carroll away from him. During a practice his senior year, Pete Carroll took a trip to see Julio in person. But once they arrived and got out of the car at the football field during the middle of practice, Julio's head coach saw Pete, took Julio off the field, ran him inside, got the principal and athletic director, and they locked the school down. Then they quickly got Nick Saban on the phone right away and said, hey, Pete Carroll's outside. Right then and there is when Julio got his full ride scholarship on the spot from Alabama. From that moment on, Nick, who was fresh off his first year with the Tide after leaving the Miami Dolphins, was frantic behind closed doors. He would walk into his recruiting coach's office every day and ask, did you talk to Julio? Did you talk to his mom? Because they had no clue where he was actually going to go. Then came National Signing Day, February 6, 2008. The number two player in the ESPN's Top 150 had to make his choice. So, I'm gonna be going to the University of Alabama. <laughs> The night he made his commitment official, picking Bama over Florida, Florida State, Oklahoma, and Texas Tech, the Alabama staff had what an assistant coach describes as a hell of a party. Exactly how much pressure did you feel to stay in state with the Crimson Tide? It felt more like home and everything, and I took a lot of visits up there, so you know, that's why I was most comfortable. Nick Saban was off a 7-6 and six season, and Alabama lost to rival Auburn every time in the past six years. Julio went in and turned things completely around. Four other freshman receivers had already committed to Alabama before Julio. Chris Jackson, BJ Scott, Melvin Ray, and Destin Hood. But Julio was not scared of battling for his position on the team. And he became the first true freshman wide receiver to ever start in a season opener as he started against Clemson in 2008. In the game, he caught four passes for 28 yards and a touchdown. Julio did not disappoint considering he played in a run-oriented offense. Finishing with 58 catches for 924 yards and 4 touchdowns, he was named the second team's All-SEC, All-SEC Freshman of the Year, and SEC Coaches All-Freshman Team. His performance in only that year alone drew comparisons to NFL greats like Michael Irvin and Larry Fitzgerald, who at the time was the second leading receiver in the NFL. But Julio went into a sophomore slump in his second year with multiple injuries. He sprained his ankle during the preseason. Then over the course of the season, it was his shoulder, knee, and hand, causing him to miss a game or two due to surgeries. The mixture of injuries, attention from defenses, some drop passes, and lack of opportunities in the offense kept his stats well below than his freshman year. His numbers dropped with 43 receptions for 556 yards and again four touchdowns. Alabama continued through the regular season undefeated though at 13-0, working their way to the national championship in 2010 against the number two Texas Longhorns. His 23 yards receiving led the tide in the game as the passing game struggled a little bit, but Alabama took the championship home with a 37-21 victory. At the beginning of his junior year, he had 93 receiving yards against San Jose State, then set Alabama's record for receiving yards in a game with 221 against Tennessee and had two rushing touchdowns. That year, back healthy, Julio caught 78 passes for 1,100 yards and seven touchdowns. He left Alabama as a three-time All-SEC wide receiver. He ended his Alabama career 
second in career receptions and yards, and fourth in touchdown catches, and had eight career 100 receiving yard games, which was second in school history. But outside of how great of a coach Nick Saban is, Julio's choice to stay home helped lay the foundation for a dynasty down in Alabama. Not only was he impactful on the field, he was equally as important off the field as well. Statistically speaking, Julio doesn't rank at the very top of any Alabama's list, but ask any fan and they'll probably tell you that he is one of the greatest receivers in school history. He excelled at the 2011 NFL Combine, posting the longest long jump and the third fastest 40-yard dash among wide receivers despite having a broken bone in his foot. Then on the night of the 2011 draft, the Cleveland Browns and the Atlanta Falcons made a bold trade that they say could have gotten a coach fired, but it turned out great for one team, but didn't go so well for the other team. Cleveland traded the number six overall pick to Atlanta for five draft picks, its first, second, and fourth round picks in 2011, plus the first and fourth round picks in 2012. With the sixth pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Julio Jones. Wide receiver, Alabama. The Falcons trading all that away was to give Matt Ryan a dynamic option on the outside. Julio spent a decade in a Falcons uniform, and he and Matt set numerous franchise records along the way. His first career touchdown reception came in week eight of his rookie year against the Colts, which is probably one of the greatest ways to make an introduction to the NFL, a 50-yard diving catch at the goal line. Looking for Jones, it's triple covered, and he caught it. No. He maintained complete control, score is good. And that is the first career regular season touchdown. And he didn't stop catching the fans' eyes after that. Every year, week in and week out, Julio kept defensive coordinators on their toes trying to come up with a way to stop him. But everything they did wasn't working. He dominated by using his unique and lethal combination of size, speed, and body control to make exceptional catches and turning those into textbook touchdowns. Inside, a longer throw, and that's Jones, and he is gone. No flags are down. Right. Goes that way for Julio Jones, and he taps his toes. Yes, touchdown. Throws for the catch, is made by Julio Jones. He's still going. Julio Jones to Going deep to Jones. He wins the catch, and he is in. Taking a shot. of shine and at the top he also suffered through multiple injuries on his lower body over his run in atlanta but even played through some of them because of how determined and hard worker he was from his entry in 2011 to 2020 he put up great numbers that put him if not first still ranked high in many records leaving everyone watching amazed at what kind of nfl player he was one NFL coordinator told me he's simply an avatar. There is no one like him. He can beat you in all three phases of the football field. Really? Julio Jones has everything. I mean, he's big, he's fast. Uh, uh, the way he can come out his routes, you know, he can make catches. I got to go with Julio, though. Julio Jones, just just when you see, when you see, there's certain guys, when you see him come out of the locker room, you see him get off the bus, it's like, okay. Okay, I, I've, been, <laughs> I've been watching him on film all week, but okay. He, he, I, it, it's... He actual avatar. Julio Jones is the best receiver in the entire NFL. He's phenomenal. After 10 years with the same organization, a devastating loss in his one and only Super Bowl appearance in a injury-filled 2020 season, only playing nine games, Julio was ready for a change. Trade rumors were up in the air last season 
and on May 24th, 2021, while live shooting the show Undisputed, Shannon Sharp decided to get to the bottom of Julio's situation, which caused a lot of controversy because it was on live TV and didn't tell Julio until midway through the conversation. You want to go to the Cowboys, Julio? Or you want to stay in Atlanta? Oh, man, no, I'm out of there, man. You He's out. out. He's out of there. We don't go to Dallas. If you go to, you ain't winning in Dallas, Julio. Come on, man. You already know I know. That's good enough. Yeah. Julio, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for calling me back. We on air, but I appreciate you calling me, dog. A few months later, his wish was granted. And after a recruiting video from his colleague, AJ Brown. Julio! That's what they're going to say when you make a catch. Come on, Julio. Come on. The 32-year-old future Hall of Famer has signed and is now a Titan. Atlanta sent him in a 2023 sixth round pick to Tennessee in exchange for a 2022 second rounder and a 2023 fourth rounder. Atlanta lost the best player in team history because they mismanaged their money and have become less and less competitive since losing the Super Bowl to New England. They have been on a steep fall since blowing that 28-3 lead and they have gone 29-37 and in the four seasons since. But trading away Julio is like hitting rock bottom. He is absolutely still elite when he's healthy for being considered an old head in the league with 10 years under his belt. The question is whether he can stay healthy across a full season and still dominate like he has proven he can. I feel like I'm the best receiver in the league. Every receiver should feel that about themselves. It's all about, it's all about a confidence. Cause you can't you never put another man in front of you like, oh, he's better than me. Like we do the same, we do, we do the same thing. I, I never compare myself to him because like all of us, like a lot of people when I was coming out of college, me and AJ is talk about me and AJ. We're two different receivers. 